and I'm gonna review Mad Hippie for you guys as you have been requesting that. This is their ever popular vitamin C serum. I have a video about vitamin C serums and why I don't, uh, I can never recommend a vitamin C serum. Everybody disagrees with me, but when you go in the dermatology literature, you will find that the shortcoming of vitamin C applied topically to the skin is that it's incredibly unstable, A, it oxidizes very quickly um, and loses its free radical scavenging ability very quickly. And uh, B, it's difficult to uh, penetrate the skin, so it, trans, trans epidermal delivery is, is a challenge. And it can be very irritating. Uh, so it, it's something that holds a lot of holds a lot of promise, but there's so much variability from formulation to formulation that it's almost impossible to recommend one. And none of these are standardized in any way. And so whatever they're telling you on the label as far as their vitamin C, whatever brand it is, it's really just a marketing ploy. There's there's nothing there's nothing to say that they've got the magic formula. But Mad Hippie specifically uses sodium ascorbyl phosphate. Okay, so mag magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, MAP, is a uh, more stable, is more stable than L-ascorbic acid. Uh, so, you know, that's what they're promoting here, that they have a more stable vitamin C. However, uh, L-ascorbic acid is the most bioactive and the most active form of vitamin C that you could apply topically to the skin. And the studies on ascorbyl phosphate, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, they're not, they're, they're far more limited in scope and power, meaning numbers of participants, than those with L-ascorbic acid. There's really insufficient data on, while, while this is more stable, who, who knows how well it gets into the skin. So that's a major, major thing they're not telling you here is really we don't have uh, nearly as much evidence for, for that being as effective as L-ascorbic acid. Yeah, it is more stable, but does it get in and is it biologically active? Those are the two, those are two things that uh, the uh, godfather, Albert Kligman, the godfather of cosmeceuticals would, would be questioning here in, in Mad Hippie. And they don't really have any, any uh, peer-reviewed studies to, to support their claims, you know, what they're selling you here. All right, but you want to put vitamin C on your skin, that's your prerogative. My main issue with this, and why I absolutely can't recommend it, is they, they went and put citrus citrus in this. They put grapefruit in, in this. Grapefruit has, uh, citrus does not belong in skincare, period. Citrus oil, citrus extract, citrus fruit, citrus peel, citrus juice, of any kind of citrus fruit has something called furocoumarin. So it's a known phytotoxin. You are basically uh, chasing a rainbow here with a, you know, a touted more stable vitamin C. You're chasing a rainbow and you're going down, you're going down a, a rabbit hole of, of confirmed topical toxins, <laughs> you know, that's going to cause harm to your skin. So I can't recommend this at all. I mean, if you want to do a vitamin C serum, that's your choice, but choose one like, like, uh, the SkinCeuticals one, at least, that all it has is L-ascorbic acid stabilized with ferulic acid, another antioxidant, and vitamin E. I mean, all of this other stuff, all of these plant derives, sage, that's that's just begging for begging for problems. And with the confirmed phototoxin in there, uh, I yeah, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go with this one. I know it, I know people are are jazzed about it because it is quote more affordable, but you know, it's got major limitations. Their vitamin A serum uses this hydroxypinacolone retinoate, which Mad Hippie and uh, The Ordinary tout as being uh, bioactive retinoids. So retinols, as I've said, suffer the limitation in that they have to undergo two oxidations. A, they've got to get into your skin, and then B, they've got to undergo oxidation steps to get to their active state. Um, whether or not they do that uh, efficiently is, is hard to promise for sure, but they seem potentially helpful. Uh, both The Ordinary and I guess Mad Hippie, they claim that all the, they make all these claims about uh, 
about their hydroxypinacolone retinoid. You go to the literature and there are two reports, both from the same group, two, two small, uh, very preliminary pilot studies on this, on this uh, vitamin A derivative that show it to be promising, but the studies show it to be promising, but not any more promising than any retinol. And uh, really the claims that both the ordinary and mad hippie make about it are not substantiated whatsoever. All right, but uh, that aside, this product has some potentially good ingredients. You know, it's got ceramides in it, which are helpful for restoring the skin barrier. It has safflower seed oil in it, which is rich in linoleic acid, a fatty acid. Uh, that uh, an essential fatty acid that's helpful for skin. It also has hyaluronic acid that's a humectant. This also has uh, beta-glucans from oat in it. Wonderful. Aloe, aloe leaf juice can be irritating for some people. This has aloe in it which can be irritating for some people but is anti-inflammatory and has anti-inflammatory properties. This has coconut oil in it which uh, some people can be allergic to coconut oil and coconut oil derivatives and it is otherwise not a great moisturizer. It's uh, just kind of a weak emollient, but whatever, that's not my major issue with this. My major issue with this is the, is the citrus peel oil. All right, and then we have this exfoliating serum that has alpha hydroxy acids in it. Uh, this has glycolic acid in it. Glycolic acid is the smallest alpha hydroxy acid, so it, can, it penetrates the most deeply when the product is formulated properly and can lightly exfoliate the skin. This also has lactic acid in it, which can lightly exfoliate. Both lactic acid and glycolic acid, they're, they're alpha hydroxy acids that can serve as humectants to you know, uh, hydrate the skin uh, and boost, boost uh, skin hydration. This also has niacinamide in it, which is uh, helpful for restoring the skin barrier, helpful for redness. Good ingredient. It has uh, tea extract, rich in antioxidants, can uh, diminish the appearance of pores, and can be um, can be um, helpful for acne as well. This actually has good ingredients in it, except for peppermint leaf extract. Peppermint is a um, is a vaso is going to vasodilate the skin. It's going to cause tingling. But aside from the peppermint, I don't have a problem with this. It also has gigawite in it. Gigawite is and it is a botanic brightener. It it, it is uh, it is a confirmed botanic brightener, and it can be very helpful for many people in terms of improving the appearance of hyperpigmentation. I say of all of the Mad Hippie ones, believe it or not, the exfoliating serum seems okay. But they have they put so much stuff in here that. I, I question if this is going to be irritating to people, but yeah. Their antioxidant facial oil, uh, their antioxidant facial oil has sea buckthorn oil in it, which has um, a, is a rich source of uh, gamma linolenic acid, an essential fatty acid. It also has grapeseed oil in it, a good source of um, antioxidants. If you want to go pursuing antioxidants, however, this has a bunch of fruit extracts in it that really are basically fragrance. You have to be careful with stuff like that because those fragrancy oils they contain things like uh, citronellol and uh, geraniol. Those are those are compounds that make up fragrance and are and are. Um, and our antigens that, that cause problems for the skin. This also has sweet orange oil in it, so there they go, putting citrus in it. I don't recommend the antioxidant facial, facial oil. And the Hydrating Nutrient Mist is kind of a watered-down version of their um, vitamin C serum. Uh, I can't see the ingredients on the bottle. The ingredients aren't on the bottle, but I looked at the ingredients earlier. Um, I believe this one also has a citrus oil in it. I could be wrong. The problem with these mists is that they're largely water. You spray water on the skin, it evaporates, and in, in, and in evaporating, it pulls water out of the deeper layers of the skin into the atmosphere. It evaporates and leads to dryness. Uh, so I don't recommend this. It's got a lot of fragrance ingredients in it, uh, and is not a, it's not really a logical delivery. Their cream cleanser, I 
I like their cream cleanser aside from the fact that they put orchid extract in it. Orchid is a flower even though they follow it by the word extract does not mean that this that that it's not a flower and does not mean that it's not fragrant. So this is this does have fragrance in it, but it has good ingredients otherwise. It has macadamia oil and uh, green tea extract which can as I said can be helpful for pores. It's shea butter based. Shea butter is a wonderful emollient and occlusive. It's a wonderful moisturizer, so it's nice in a cream cleanser. I actually recommend the cream cleanser, and I think it's pretty pretty affordable. I mean, here at Whole Paycheck, it's 17 bucks, but I think you can get it for much cheaper on iHerb. I don't recommend their SPF, however. It's probably the worst thing you could put on your face for sun protection because it has uh, orange oil in it, a, uh, a phototoxin. So, yeah, I wouldn't go with this. Otherwise, it, you know, it could be good. It's a, a mineral sunscreen, so zinc oxide. And no, the percentage of zinc doesn't really, you shouldn't like fixate on that because the percentage of zinc is going to change a lot depending on the formulation of the product and the size of the zinc and whether or not it's coated. So, you know, it's, it's, the idea that you need to look at the percentage is, is not, is not something you need to concern yourself with. The thing you need to concern yourself with is the fact that this has citrus sweet orange oil in it, and then jasmine oil is fragrance. And some of the fra some of the compounds in fragrance also can be also can be phyto phytotoxins as well. So don't recommend this. They have an eye cream as well that has uh, green tea in it or white tea, excuse me, uh, which is helpful. But they went and put steamed lime in it. Probably the worst ingredient you could put in a skincare product. Lime has the high, the highest uh, concentration of of phototoxin of any citrus. So worst ingredient you could put in a skincare product. This has matrixol in it. Uh, I talked about that in my peptide uh, talk. My peptide video and uh, it's also present in the uh, Derma E moisturizer so I would go with Derma E if you you want to pursue peptides and a moisturizer um, I also have a video you know in my video talking about Matrixol I talk about peptides so you can check that out but if you're motivated to use a peptide containing moisturizer either in an eye cream form or you know to your entire face I would go with the Derma E ones they're affordable and uh, so far seem to be the best in my some of the best I've tried um, so yeah, I don't recommend this because they put lime in it, but they also have a just face cream, which I believe is kind of a bigger version of that eye cream as, as is usually the case with eye creams. <laughs> this has niacinamide in it, a wonderful, and niacinamide is a great ingredient in moisturizers and you will find it in most moisturizers. Uh, did they put the, uh, the, the lime in this, the lime in the coconut? Let me see, I can't remember. Uh, yes, they did. Worst in worst ingredient you could put in a skincare product. Uh, this has coenzyme Q10, which is a uh, antioxidant. Um, you guys asked me a fair amount about. Uh, it's a, it's a promising antioxidant, but like all antioxidants in skincare, suffers from a limitation that you know not too stable and free radical scavenging abilities are short lived, uh, if any. Mad Hippie also has an oil cleanser that I believe also contains the citrus oils in it. They don't have it here at Whole Foods, but uh, so I don't recommend that. But if you like it and are using it, I would tell you this. Uh, they, their instructions tell you to put it on your face to break up your makeup and dirt or whatever. And then they tell you to use like a Kleenex to just wipe it off. Don't do that. Follow it up with a second step gentle uh, non-soap cleanser. And if you're here at Whole Foods, I recommend the uh, 365 cleanser. It's a good one for a second step. You could use that one. But uh, yeah, my biggest problem with Mad Hippie are they put they put fluorocumarins in all of their products or phytotoxins, so can't really recommend them. I would say um, the cream cleanser is decent. I've actually tried it myself and it's okay. Not the best cleanser I've ever used, but not bad. Uh, everything else I would skip, you know. Uh, yeah, it's affordable, but uh, affordable confirmed ph phytotoxin. Why, it's still, it, you know, it's a waste of money. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna likely, you know, it has, it only has the potential to harm you. <laughs> so I, I, in my opinion, it's not worth it. 
Yeah, and as far as phytotoxins, so citrus oils, they um, contain something called ferrocumarins, which uh, are irritating the skin, and when you go outdoors or you sit by a window, the UVA that comes from, from the sun, regardless of if it's cloudy, the UVA interacts with those ferrocumarins and intercalates, you know, weaves into your DNA and your skin cells and is mutagenic and toxic, so I don't recommend that. It's a, it's not, it's probably the worst, in, worst type, those are the worst ingredients to put in skincare products, are citrus oils, citrus extracts, citrus juice, citrus peels. Yeah.